A foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds, adored by little statesmen and philosophers and divines. If a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. A different drummer. And now, coming to you from dead center on your dial, welcome to Risk Parity Radio, where we explore alternatives in asset allocations for the do-it-yourself investor. Broadcasting to you now from the comfort of his easy chair, here is your host, Frank Vasquez. Thank you, Mary, and welcome to episode two of Risk Parity Radio. This will be one of our portfolio review sessions, and we'll be doing those hopefully every week, reviewing the six portfolios on the website, featuring one each week to talk about a little bit more in depth. Starting with the All Seasons portfolio, if we take a look at that, you know, these portfolios have just been uh, started up in the past couple of weeks here. So this one is all of $33 ahead, point <laughs> 0.33% since it started a week ago. You can see in it, it's got the VTI, which is the stock market component of it, is down one percent six percent but correspondingly we have the long-term bonds are up 1.28 percent and the gold component is up 3.46 percent so it it ends up in a profitable position at plus 33 dollars in the golden butterfly which started with ten thousand dollars about two weeks ago and these uh, are as of july 24th we are up 255 dollars since then or 2.56 2.56 percent and looking at this it is also showing some good performance in the small cap value section uh, the total stock market fund is flat the long-term treasuries are up 2.39 percent and gold is shining very brightly these days up uh, 5.6 Five percent in that uh, short period, so we're up two point five six percent in the golden butterfly. In the golden ratio portfolio, we are up two point three four percent in the uh, couple of weeks that it's been going on, with similar uh, performances uh, in the small cap value and low volatility funds. The long term bonds and gold performing well. On the other hand, the uh, growth fund, the large cap growth fund is down 2.34%, but is outweighed by the others. So it's up $219 on the 10,000 in that period of time. In the risk parity ultimate portfolio, and we won't be going through all 12 of these funds, but uh, it's got similar performance. It's up 2.12% in the couple of weeks it's been going with the biggest outperformer being the long-term treasury uh, three times uh, volatility fund which is showing a improvement of 7.24 percent in that uh, time period and gold uh, right behind that the uh, worst performer is the volatility fund there which is down 6.18 percent but only uh, comprises about 2.5% 2.5% uh, of the fund, or the uh, portfolio. Next, we have the Accelerated Permanent Portfolio, and this is our our leader these days because it's got a lot of gold in it. It is up 3.52% uh, in the couple of weeks it's been going on with the biggest performances being in the uh, leveraged long-term bond fund, TMF. It's up 7.53%, and gold is up 5.36%. And uh, the stock market p- component of that is actually down. But, so it's, uh, it's, it's doing the best of the six. And the six portfolio is the aggressive 50-50. It is also up 2.47% with the leading light in that portfolio being the uh, long-term leveraged treasury bond fund TMF up 7.37%. The stock market component of that down uh, 1% as the... Uh, lagging part of that portfolio 
But as you can see from these portfolios, as they perform much differently than a total stock market portfolio in that oftentimes frequent that if the stock market portion is not performing very well, one of the other components is doing pretty well. So you get a steady uh, performance out of it. And now we'll take a look at our featured portfolio of the week, which is the All Seasons Portfolio. The All Seasons Portfolio is a uh, take on uh, Ray Dalio's original all-weather portfolio that kind of set off the uh, risk parity movement when it was created back in the 1990s. This um, portfolio is a very conservative portfolio. It is only 30% uh, equities, and then uh, the rest of it we have 40% in long-term treasury bonds, 15% in intermediate treasury bonds, so that's 55% of the portfolio, and then smaller portions of both gold at 7.5% and commodities at 7.5% of the portfolio. This compares to a very conservative portfolio that you might find in, say, a Vanguard Wellesley fund. It's like a 30-70 kind of portfolio. It's uh, very robust. It'll help you sleep at night. I think over the past 20 years, the maximum drawdown in this portfolio over a year has been 5 or 6%. And that's uh, only happened four times. So 16 years out of the last 20, it's gone up and only four times down and barely down. If you looked at how this portfolio performed in March, it was down a maximum of 8%, uh, which is quite tolerable considering that uh, an all-stock portfolio was down about 40% at the uh, maximum drawdown in uh, March. Typically, this portfolio will have about half of the risk of the stock market, half or less. It will not perform as well as the stock market simply because it's uh, so conservative. The hedge funds like Bridgewater would use this as they would take it and then add leverage to it or borrow money to invest more in the portfolio to increase its returns. That's not something we've done here because we wanted to keep it in its... Uh, in its most rudimentary form. And so this is the form that Tony Robbins took it in when he wrote Money Master the Game and, and assembled the uh, data from Ray Dalio to construct it. And as we look into it further, one of the things you want to do when looking at your portfolios is go and analyze the actual correlations of what you have in your portfolio. And you can do this yourself if you go to www.portfoliovisualizer.com. They have a asset correlation sector, sector there. And then you can put in whatever funds or stocks or anything you own and get a nice little matrix out of that showing what the relative correlations are. And when you look at something like this, you see that the stock market component is balanced out by negatively correlated long-term treasury bonds and negatively correlated intermediate-term treasury bonds, and that the uh, gold and commodities components tend to have pretty much zero correlation to the other components. So you can, uh, in practice, what you'll see then is that the bonds typically moving in the opposite direction of the stock market on any given day, and the uh, gold and commodities components moving on their own without regard to what uh, the stock market or the bond market is doing. As it happens these days, gold is on a, on a tear, which happens periodically. It's completely unpredictable, uh, which is why you don't want to try and jump in and out of uh, something like this. You'll see that gold is an interesting component. You'll find it in most of these kinds of portfolios. And it's a, it's a difficult thing to invest in on its own because it has a volatility that is about one and a half to two times of the stock market, but it does not have a performance like that. So in any given year or any given 10-year period, gold could be the very worst performer in the portfolio or it could be the very best portfolio performer, and you uh, won't be able to predict that. So the idea is that you're going to hold a little bit of it. It's like the seasoning on your uh, in your meal. It's, it's not something you want to 
uh, overcommit to, but it but it it tends to smooth out the overall performance of these these sorts of portfolios. So this port- particular portfolio has seven point five percent gold in it, and uh, a similar proportion of commodities in it. I'll t- uh, just talking briefly about uh, commodities funds. This is one of the more difficult areas to actually find good funds to invest in. And the one we picked for this is an Invesco product called PDBC um, that is actively managed. Uh, one thing that's difficult about commodities is that you're looking at a panoply of, of very different sorts of things ranging from agricultural commodities like corn or wheat or soybeans or uh, frozen concentrated orange juice to uh, things like oil and gas and, uh, and then uh, things like uh, precious metals, which will, these will also include some smaller gold component along usually with some silver and perhaps some uh, palladium or uh, other uh, industrial metals, perhaps even some copper. So we picked one that uh, seemed to be suitable uh, that covers a wide variety of commodities, but I don't think that um, this area has been fully actually explored by the uh, fund managers to put these sorts of things together. There's no such thing these days. It's a balanced total commodity fund that you can find. They're all slightly a bit different. Um, so if you want to have commodities in your portfolio, there are six or seven uh, broad-based funds that you could choose. And uh, we picked this one because it seemed to have a good mix of uh, performance uh, and um, and fees. The fees on these are a little bit higher than you'll find in in uh, you know, stock market funds simply because simply because it's a little bit more difficult to put them together um, in any uh, suitable way. So that is the all seasons portfolio. It is uh, our more, most conservative portfolio. It is up these days. We would expect that uh, it will stay uh, in a steady uh, performance. And the only question being whether it will perform well enough to uh, accept the drawdowns that uh, may be coming um, for it as we take money out of it on a monthly basis. And that is the end of episode two of Risk Parity Radio. Uh, You can find us at the website www.riskparityradio.com. Uh, you may also find us now on Stitcher. Uh, we have put in our application to get listed on iTunes and uh, Spotify, and uh, those are pending. We should be up there uh, soon as well. We look forward to speaking with you next time for Episode 3, where we'll go into a little bit more of a history of risk parity style portfolios. This is Frank Vasquez, your Risk Parity Radio host, signing off for now. Thank you and good day. The Risk Parity Radio Show is hosted by Frank Vasquez. The content provided is for entertainment and informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, investment, tax, or legal advice. Please consult with your own advisors before taking any actions based on any information you have heard here, making sure to take into account your own personal circumstances.